Good afternoon. Welcome to the presentation of our MBA in Sustainable Management, a joint initiative of the Ishkte Business School and Ishkte Executive Education. Uh, we will have this afternoon a, a, a panel of uh, great speakers and uh, we will try to, to have a, a great conversation around this, uh, this, uh, this team. But first of all, uh, we'll listen to a few words of, uh, from Maria João Courtenhal, Dean of our uh, Ixcte, uh, Business School, uh, followed by José Cresto Carvalho, President of Ixcte Executive Education. Okay, Maria João, please. Okay, thank you. So good afternoon uh, for all of you. And uh, so I'm Maria João Cunhal, the Dean of uh, Ixcte uh, Business School. So I would like to welcome you, you all to this meeting and thank you for joining us. And obviously uh, a special thank to our uh, invited speakers, Florencia, Filipa and Michael. So for me, it's a really pleasure to be here today in the launch of this new program, the MBA in Sustainable uh, Management. And uh, it's a really pleasure, not only because we are launching a new program uh, in the joint initiative with uh, Ixcte Executive Education, but mainly and more importantly, because uh, this new program reinforces the school engagement with areas such as ethics, responsibility, sustainability, and societal impact. So this is a path that the school has decided to follow, and it dates back to 2007 when the school, with the school affiliation to the Academy of Business in Society. And uh, later on in 2011, by becoming an affiliated member of uh, Principles of Responsible Management Education. And in 2013, with the uh, uh, Globally Responsible Leadership Initiatives. So today the school uh, fully embraces the SDJ uh, agenda, and more than ever, we are aware that values as, uh, such as sustainability and societal, uh, societal contributions should, should be more and more ingrained. And uh, having been named in this year, uh, by the 2021 edition of the Positive Impact Rating, which is a rating by students and for students. So being named as a transforming school, the second highest category, category and side by side with other international business school also reinforces that we are moving in the right direction. So, uh, as I, uh, I said, it's a really pleasure to be here launching this uh, program. And I really hope that this new uh, MBA program in sustainable management can help us to contribute to a more sustainable world, to a, a better world. And I think this uh, what we are all aiming for, to have a better world for everyone. So thank you very much. And uh, I think now the floor is your uh, José Crespo Carvalho, please. Oh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, José Crespo Carvalho. Uh, I'm here uh, representing ISCTE Executive Education, um, the body of ISCTE that, that uh, offers uh, executive education or uh, um, offers, let's say, uh, open programs and, and customized programs to companies. Um, meaning with this that we offer MBA programs, uh, executive masters, postgraduate programs, uh, open, open programs in general, um, being online or offline or in presence. And also we, we offer um, 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 boost programs, short duration programs, and, and uh, uh, a, a lot of, uh, customized initiatives to, to specific companies and to specific uh, entities that we uh, also develop. 
Um, we have also a, 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 an artificial intelligence uh, um, business hub that we are developing. Uh, and we are today here for um, to present this, this uh, innovative, I think, um, MBA in sustainable management. We are all happy uh, to be together, uh, to be with our partners, to be uh, in a, a very specific moment that we um, should be proud of because uh, um, days like this um, should, should come more often uh, because uh, something is happening in our society that, that is representing the change of the society. Uh, and this is one of the moments. So uh, I'm very glad to be here. I, I would like to, to thank you all for, for being here and uh, with us. And well, just, just a final word to say that Ishte Executive Education will, will run this, this, this uh, uh, MBA program uh, for, the, uh, 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 for our school, for the EBS uh, school. So uh, welcome everybody. Okay, thank you. Well, thank you very much for these uh, first words. Now we are trying to have an open discussion around uh, this, uh, this, uh, this team, around sustainability, around learning, this learning path that we all are uh, willing to develop here and bring to the society. Um, and we'll start, out, uh, we'll start with Anna Simais. Anna Simais is the director of this MBA and I, I, I will start to ask Anna to present herself. And then uh, I will ask her, why? Why an MBA, uh, Anna? Thank you very much, Paulo. Um, and I would like to greet everyone. Um, it's a great, great pleasure uh, to be here uh, today and uh, launching this, uh, this program. Um, so I'm an uh, assistant professor at Ishkte Business School. Uh, I've been working um, for uh, several years with um, <clears throat> with uh, with the school and um, and the topics of strategy and uh, sustainability, CSR and ethics. So that's uh, that's how I arrived here today. In terms of the program, what you ask? So so why uh, why this MBA? I, I would like to highlight um, the purpose of this MBA in sustainable management. Um, the, the, the colleagues, we have a great team of, of scholars and, uh, together uh, and really engaged um, to uh, give life to this project. And uh, we came together uh, into uh, the purpose of the MBA, which is basically to prepare leaders who focus on sustainability to tackle management challenges with innovative solutions. So basically the reason why, first of all, is to, um, to look at sustainability not as an afterthought and to be able to drive impact of full change with a purpose. So that's, that, that's why it, it, it appeared. But of course, there's a, a sense of urgency uh, and Jose mentioned that already, uh, and, and Maria João as well. Uh, maybe it's, it, it's not um, uh, uh, by chance that tomorrow is the Earth Overshoot Day. So tomorrow marks the day uh, where we'll be um, out of budget, let's say, in terms of our resources. So um, for the rest of the day, we'll be... Um, working on deficit, let's say, living in deficit. So today is a very important day. There is a certain sense of urgency for this kind of MBAs, this type of um, approaches to management. There's of course a sense of purpose of the institutions involved. Uh, there's a sense of pressure more and more that business schools and executive education um, being pressured to incorporate sustainability in the teaching. Uh, and, and that's what we've been doing throughout the different programs and in these institutions, uh, but also a sense of opportunity. There is an increasing demand for this uh, type of approach and we are very happy to embrace, uh, to, to, to engage in this uh, program. So that's very okay, quickly, great. that's the why. Yeah, great. And okay, uh, before we go to our, uh, to our guests, uh, what, Anna, what do you think it differentiates this, this MBA? Uh, mm -hmm. Meaning that we have not so many offers in this, uh, 
in this in this area all around mm -hmm. the world and in Europe and in Portugal is the first program MBA program completely mm -hmm. concerned with the sustainable management which is different from sustainability mm -hmm. uh, but what what do you think uh, it differentiates this MBA from the rest and mm -hmm. for whom uh, do you think are the professionals these actives that this may concern this kind of intensive uh, approach uh, on on this matter? That, that, that's a very good question, Paul. So I would say that something that clearly differentiates this uh, MBA program is the fact that um, uh, it has been conceived from scratch with the lens of sustainability in terms of uh, the various areas of, of management, okay? So, um, We'll cover the basics of management areas, but with the lens of sustainability. Uh, and of course, the fact that it's an accredited program, it's accredited by uh, AMBA, which is the association that internationally accredits uh, a selected number, uh, number of MBAs uh, that represent the highest standard of achievement uh, in postgraduate executive education. So that's, that's a very important point for us. Um, but also, uh, we believe that this program combines knowledge, skills, but also an attitude development. So it's not only about um, um, uh, the, the, the topics and the subjects, but also building a mindset uh, around sustainability. And that's, that's what we'll be working a lot with our participants. There is also a study trip with um, organized in conjunction with a, one of our partners, Hand School of Business, which is a triple crown organization. And the fact that all the MBAs around um, an experience of immersion in sustainability in a holistic way uh, around the, uh, SDG, the SDG agenda and the uh, 2030 agenda, that will have different activities to boost the attitude of the students towards this and, and bring together national and international participants as well as academics and companies and organizations. I think this, this is, uh, let's say, um, um, a bundle of uh, benefits that um, that I believe differentiate this, this program. Okay, great. So now I would like to, to present you Florencia Librizzi, which is the head of program and partnership uh, partnerships at SDG Academy, which is the flagship education initiative of the UN Sustainable Development Solutions Network. Well, uh, she also serves, and I'm reading, as you see, uh, also serves as a co-chair on the UN Higher Education for Sustainability Initiative. Long name, long experience, and uh, I would like to ask you, in your point of view, what is the importance of sustainability and sustainable management and bringing education alongside with this SDG purpose uh, that we all talk about it. So uh, what's your point of view? Uh, and please present you, if you want, present uh, yourself uh, in, a, in, a, in a more complete way. Thank you, Paulo, for this introduction and for having me. Uh, I want to, you know, uh, welcome also everyone else, but um, tell you that how welcome I feel to be in this event with one of our also SCSN institutions. Uh, each day is also part of SCSN, so where I'm glad to be here and contribute to my point of views. Um, so um, I, I mean, I think you have introduced me rightly. What I would like to say also is that I've been living here in the US for now over 11 years, um, where I also became a lawyer, but my training has been as a lawyer uh, back in my home country in Argentina. So I come from the regular aspects of sustainability, you know, having work uh, with issues of human rights, indigenous people, environmental law and so on. Um, and then having been in different institutions of the UN, like the Principle for Responsible Management Education for about seven years and the Global Compact and then with SCSN. Uh, so I believe that regulation is such an important part that policy efforts as well in this in moving sustainability and sustainable development forward. But education is the absolute vehicle to achieve all of these priorities going forward. So let's take a step back and say, what is then sustainability and why is it so important? Uh, as Anna was referring, we do have resources, right? 
Uh, and then these resources have to be managed in a way, in a responsible way that we're not depleting those resources for future generations. And that's what we, we've been doing over and over. And uh, we have that urgency and that pressure because we cannot continue to live beyond the constraints of our, our mother earth. And this really is about the, the kindness and the mindfulness and the responsibility that we need and to devote to our planet, but also to our fellow human beings. Uh, and this requires looking at environmental issues, the, 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 the people and planet basically, and also economic, of course, but good governance, anti-corruption and so on. So um, this is, you know, it has been so clear before we have the SDGs, uh, the Sustainable Development Goals, as um, both Anna and Maria Joao also referred, that were launched in 2015. Um, and then, you know, many, many uh, kind of like a really long history that, that reached to that point. We only have less than 10 years to achieve this sustainable development goal. And we also have seen through COVID uh, how this magnifying lens in which we see that in, 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 sorry, in, inequality is so, um, you know, evident uh, that, you know, the, the constraints that have been, um, you know, on, on, the, on the public health issues, on education and so on, COVID has really show us even more and more evidence. Um, plus the progress on the SDGs has been decreasing and, and it has been really COVID a setback on in terms of the progress in the SDGs. So what, how do we achieve sustainability? Um, you know, how do we make sure that these real world problems that we're facing right now can be taken up for uh, the brilliant minds of this current and next generation, that they can bring their talents, their expertise, their purpose, to make sure that not only they have a, a, a fulfilling life, but they can provide a positive contribution to our societies. So I think that's about, uh, you know, first of all, the importance of sustainability because it's critical. This is survival, right? We need, need to do this in order to survive and, and have, a, you know, like, and make sure that we leave no one behind in this world that we want to create sustainable, fair, just, but also um, we need to make sure that um, we do so with science, uh, with the right mindset, skills, attitude, global citizenship. We need our students to understand the place, uh, the diversity the, and the place to create peaceful societies. Um, so we need to incorporate all of that into our curricula, into our research, into our way that we deal in our campus, because we know our students not only learn in class, they also learn in the campus, they learn by seeing how an institution functions. If the board is, is, is um, inclusive, if we have, uh, you know, how we treat our employees, how we treat our students and so on. So I think it's a wonderful opportunity for all, all of us. Plus we do have the pressure to think how we integrate this. Um, so I would love to continue to talk, but maybe I will just stop there. Um, no, and no, no, I, I, I'll take your words and ask you uh, if you can share with us your experience with the SDG Academy and the project and your work in the UN and talk, uh, talk us through the, 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 that project? Absolutely. I mean, first I will say that for those that don't know the Sustainable Development Solutions Network or SDSN, uh, it was launched in the year 2012 by former Secretary General Ban Ki-moon. Um, I was directed by Professor Jeffrey Sachs that I'm sure you all know him because you know, of his uh, really uh, rem remarkable work on sustainable development. He's also a professor for uh, university professor at Columbia University and you know, bestseller and, and so on. But you know, uh, what I will say is that at SESN, we were mandated to bring together, mobilize science and academia, uh, to bring concrete and, and, and important solutions to these issues of sustainable development and the Paris Climate Agreement. Uh, so in our work, in our portfolio, we have research and policy work. We have the networks that, as I said, I'm happy to have uh, each day, uh, among our, our research um, and um, institutions and research center. We have over 1,500. We also have education, which is the SDG Academy, and I will talk briefly about that. And we also engage youth uh, in terms of education and action for the SDGs. So when it comes to the SDG Academy, which is this um, um, initiative, the flagship education initiative of SESN that I, I, I lead, um, traditionally we have focused on creating high quality content on sustainable development to be taught freely Anywhere in the world is accessed freely. Um, and the, you know, we, we use technology to build this at scale. We wanted to make sure that we touch as many people as possible. 
also having into account that education is not just formal education, which is obviously is very important, and that's why I applaud your effort um, on, on you know with this new program. But we also need to be looking at education as a long life uh, journey. And um, so that's why we created, we have at the moment uh, over 39 open online courses on sustainable development, covering all of the SDGs, bringing um, experts from all over the world. And you can access that through the platform of the MOOCs and take the whole MOOC, or you can also access the different videos in our library, which can also be integrated in classes, right? So we're really catering to a long, and like a large audience uh, of learners, but also of educators that are using this content. Um, okay, great, great. Well, um, I would like to introduce now Flip uh, uh, Carmona, which is responsible for sustain for the sustainability uh, sustainability area in CGD Caixa Geral de Pósitos, and uh, I would like to 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 ask you. Uh, in your, with your experience in a big bank institution like CGD, uh, how, how, how are you facing uh, this challenge of bringing sustainability and sustainable management to a great corporation like CGD, the banking system? Uh, we all know the, 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 the challenges that the, the great institutions faces. Uh, ahead and uh, how, are, how is the mindset and how are you bringing uh, this uh, sustainable management mindset to your corporation to CGD uh, and how is how do you face the role of education uh, in terms of like this MBA uh, is an important tool for your uh, collaborators in CGD. Thank you very much um, and good afternoon to all. Uh, first of all, and on behalf of CGD, I would like to thank ISCTE Business School for the invitation to be one of the partners of uh, the MBA in Sustainable Management, which is extremely honorable uh, for CGD. And for those who, doesn't know, uh, who don't know CGD, uh, Caixa is a public and the biggest Portuguese bank, uh, which give us the responsibility to be the leader in the sustainable finance uh, namely helping the economy to move towards a more sustainable society. And uh, so regarding your question around the, 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 the importance of the ESG training uh, for companies, um, this partnership responds to one of the CGD goals uh, in terms of sustainability, namely the challenge on the training needs in these matters has a key element to promote the transition to a low carbon economy and social inclusiveness. Um, in 2019, CGD uh, signed, among other financial institutions, a commitment letter on sustainable finance, uh, which addresses one of the fundamental principles, the, the needs uh, of training the, the top management uh, of companies uh, on this matter. So it is essential that top management of companies consider ESG aspects in their decision making. Uh, um, this can only happen through education and training, has elementary principles of responsible, uh, ethical, and inclusive, inclusive management. Um, uh, regarding your uh, question about the challenges and difficulties that companies face uh, 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 when trying to align their business models with the sustainable management, I think that the, the biggest uh, uh, difficulty is to really integrate the ESG aspects or criteria along all business process. And in particular, in CGD, um, we have different several uh, processes that we have to include these matters, uh, starting from customer assessment, uh, rating evaluation, identification and management of climate and social risk, um, including efficiency of uh, the environmental management of, of our buildings, for instance. So uh, CGD is making a, a a long effort uh, in the last uh, months and, and last years, um, trying to integrate these aspects in the, the banking management and operational at all 
uh, different levels of the business. So some examples of this uh, integration is, for instance, um, the, the most recent rating assessment model. We reviewed our uh, uh, rating model that we assess our clients in order to integrate uh, environmental and also social criteria. So right now or from now on, we are going to evaluate our clients regarding climate and social performance um, in order to, uh, to define some commercial approaches for, for these clients as well. So helping them to make the transition for a low carbon economy. Uh, we also, uh, in 2020, we also started to evaluate uh, in our uh, risk management models to evaluate climate risks. So we are now evaluating our exposure in terms of climate risks. And, and uh, so this is uh, some examples how uh, CGD integrates these aspects along all the, 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 the process. And uh, it's not just a matter of uh, uh, producing uh, uh, renewable energy or reducing our emissions, CO2 emission, but the, the, the point is how we make decisions uh, uh, in order to address environmental and social aspects. Um, that's that's the, 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 the key point. So I can assume, Philippe, that a, a program like this MBA would be a great help for your stuff uh, in CGD. Uh, what, what do you recently, what are you doing in, in terms of uh, bringing this knowledge to your corporation uh, or you are not doing anything or what do you intend to do? Uh, well, as how, how do you spread the culture mm -hmm. of the the, the, the yes. sustainable management inside this corporate the CGD. That's, that, that's exactly the, the challenge, is to change the culture, to change the behaviors of our employees uh, from the, the ones that uh, talk with clients from the top to the top management uh, um, as, as a whole, as a whole company. So uh, we are working with our, internally with our training uh, uh, department to define different uh, uh, training programs that will uh, um, uh, able all the employees to understand what is the challenge uh, on the sustainable uh, management. So um, each of us has an employee of CGD has a, a, a key role to promote uh, sustainable practice. We already have a sustainable policy, we have environmental policies, policy uh, we signed several several uh, commitments around sustainable finance because that's the, the key area where CGD uh, can have a, a, a big different uh, difference in the in the Portuguese market is to finance uh, green products and finance green uh, uh, projects as well um, so we are trying to define a, a different kind of trainings that uh, can match all the the gaps uh, so we started with um, with a program specific for the top management as i said our, the commitment letter that we sign is quite clear around the need to to train the top management because of course they are the ones who uh, should uh, make the the decision making uh, considering esg topics and that's why this uh, mba is so important because we are go we are going to to train uh, the future managers of companies and uh, also the fact that it's a, a raising uh, opportunity to raise awareness through civil society. So we think that is something that it's not for the top management or for the, the managers of the future, but also the all society uh, should be aware of the, the challenge that we are facing. And uh, for instance, if I'm a client of CGD, I, I have to be aware of the different solutions that I have actually have now uh, available for me as a client to make the more responsible uh, uh, and environmental efficient option in terms of financing, for instance. So it's something that it's, it has to, to, to raise internally uh, as a company, but for sure the, 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 the society, the community, the clients are also uh, uh, quite important to bring in this, this, um, this path. Okay, great. Thank you very much. I didn't mention before your uh, intervention, uh, but uh, uh, CGD is a partner of this MBA, okay? And also FLAD. FLAD is a partner, uh, uh, as a partnership with this MBA. 
from the, the first hour. And I would like to introduce you and Michael Baum. Uh, he's, a, he's, active, he belong, he's a member of FLAD's Executive Council and he's Active Manager of, of Higher Education programs, programs and non-profit organizations in the US and Europe. And you are also a top academic. So uh, I, I would, first of all, I would like to ask you, what's your view uh, about this, this, this subject, this sustainability and sustainable management, and and, and after uh, the view of flood, which I, I suppose it's it's a bit similar. But first of all, your personal view on this matter. Uh, thanks, Paulo. Um, yeah, like everyone said, it's a pleasure for me to uh, to be coming in some ways back to Ishkete. I, I don't know if you know, but I was uh, an invited professor in your uh, PhD program in public policy for several years during a previous stay when I was, I was, I was here at the foundation on the board. Um, of course, I'm, I'm now at Catholica, so we won't talk about that. <laughs> but, uh, but it's nice, I'm still even advising a PhD thesis uh, for an Ishkite student. So, uh, you know, in some ways I'm, I'm happy to, to come back and, and speak with you all about this really exciting new initiative. Um, I think I speak both for me personally, but also for, for Rita Fadden, our president and all the members of the board and our boards of trustees, um, you know, that we, we like to support uh, ideas which we see as being in some ways path-breaking and, you know, on the cusp and, and forward thinking. And clearly this is, this is a topic that I think we all uh, are thinking about in, in a way that, uh, that Florencia mentioned. I mean, it's, you know, it's, we hear a lot of terms about building back better, you know, um, and greenwashing and all of these uh, kind of terms, but what I think is 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 really absolutely fundamental is that uh, you know this is this is about species preservation. <laughs> we have a we have a, an incredible self interest in sustainability. Um, you know, I think both in terms of how we think about capitalism as an economic system, about our democratic governments and our public policies, and and certainly you know in terms of how we as citizens um, are both shaped by and and of course you know are shapers of. Our, our modes of production and our modes of consumption in a, in a world of, you know, incredibly finite resources that we're just seeing on a daily basis is, is taking on an urgency that, you know, just can't be ignored anymore. Um, so, you know, in that sense, uh, sustainability and concerns about it um, are, you know, a fundamental aspect of, of what we're trying to achieve here at FLAD. Um, you know, I would say that, you know, as an institution, we are really at the beginning stages of trying to put a more concrete uh, uh, plan in place for how we're going to achieve that. For example, I mean, you know, in the world of foundations, we're still a relatively small fry. I think we're about the fifth biggest foundation in Portugal. You know, we're not the Ford Foundation or Gulbenkian, but, um, but in terms of our endowment, it's, a, it's a, you know, around 145 million euro endowment. And one, one aspect that we'd like to pay a lot more attention to is, you know, how we're investing our endowment. And I think that's true for all philanthropies, more and more thinking critically about, you know, where they invest their money and, um, and you know, trying to do so through sustainable vehicles uh, rather than through some of the more traditional methods of, of growing your endowment. Um, I would just say that, uh, you know, in terms of why we're, um, you know, why we're specifically supporting um, your initiative, um, for a number of reasons, um, you know, one of the things that I tried to do before coming on was thinking about all of our philanthropy and, you know, in what ways it relates to, to some of the SDGs. And I know in, in this conversation, uh, you know, the listeners might start getting, and they might start needing to take notes. We're talking about uh, the SDGs and CGD and, the, you know, <laughs> it's a lot of monikers here, but in terms of, you know, how the, um, how the SDGs fit in with what FLAT is doing um, and some of our projects and then how those specifically tie into to our support for your award. You know, I think the, the third SDG, good health and well-being, uh, FLAT is the um, uh, promoter of the largest award for mental health in Portugal. Uh, and this was a new initiative under this uh, particular administration, which I think is worth mentioning. The fourth SDG is quality education. And, and that's, the, um, that's the portfolio that I oversee here at the foundation. And I think um, both between myself and my colleague Elsa Henrique, who's, um, who oversees the science and technology portfolio at FLAD, um, you know, just to give you an idea of the scale of, of how, you know, how education is important to FLAD, 
um, you know, I did a little bit of investigation just to put some numbers on this. In a, in a normal, let's say pre-pandemic year, um, if you look at all of the various grants that we give to students, uh, to faculty, uh, both in the US and in Portugal, because that's our, our main niche as a foundation, uh, they totaled up to about 1.1 million euros uh, per year. Uh, this was in, in 19 and that, that goes up and down, but it's roughly gives you an idea of the scale of, of what we're trying to achieve in this area. And then I looked at you know, how many grants FLAD has, has given since our uh, inception in 1985. Uh, in, in terms of education, and it's been around 14,000. So, you know, our impact, you know, in Portugal, I think is, is significant. Uh, and we, we see, you know, your project um, is very much, uh, you know, aligned with these, these key sort of goals that FLAD has for, for education and for educating about sustainability. Um, I, if there's time, I mean, I can talk about some of the other projects that, um, that I oversee here, here at FLAD that link up with, with your project. Um, but overall, you know, I would just say that, you know, we basically, we want to contribute to the formation of the next generation um, that's going to inherit this, this world that we're leaving for them. Um, and, you know, we think that your goals and our goals are, are very much aligned. Um, also, the fact that it's, you know, you're, you're a first mover, it's an innovative program here in Portugal, and we always like to associate ourselves with, with new programs that, uh, that are innovative. And I think, you know, obviously, uh, speaking for myself and for Flat, I mean, our job is very much kind of to engage in matchmaking. And, and so insofar as we can help you open up some doors or make some connections to scholars and institutions in the United States and vice versa, because there's a lot that Portugal is doing that is far and ahead of where the United States is. Uh, for example, in terms of renewable energy, um, you know, I think um, there's a lot of there's a lot of gain to be had. And I think that's where, where FLAD sees its, its niche. Uh, and, and me personally, as somebody who kind of bounces back and forth between these two countries and two cultures, uh, it's very much what, what I like to do as well, so. Yeah, great. Thank you very much, Michael. Um, so now we are hoping to a, a broader discussion. I, I think the, the purpose now is to, to talk about this and to, to open to our viewers in the YouTube channel that please uh, do write questions and I will try to bring them to the discussion here. And um, I was thinking about uh, bringing an, a very open question and uh, uh, who wishes to grab it, please do. Um, which is, we all know that this, this, this sustainable uh, management and sustainability it's a, a long-term uh, road ahead we have but we have to build small victories along and we have to start with something uh, well i'm 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 suspicious uh, but i think you you all agree that like uh, nelson mandela said the most powerful tool to to change something in the world is by education okay so uh, we have here a great example of that but in your in your opinion, uh, what are other small victories that we can bring to organizations, to, uh, uh, to, to the universities, to the society, to whatever small victories that uh, implant some seeds around this very, very urgent matter uh, in our societies? Please uh, grab it. Florencia, you want to? Absolutely. I think, you know, um, I would say that those small victories, hopefully they will be aligned with this blueprint of the SDGs, right? Uh, and, you know, I sometimes think it's small victory. I think we need to celebrate this victory. Sometimes, you know, it seems small and it's not that small, uh, right? Um, I think just, uh, I have seen very, very interesting examples of some institutions around the world and some universities that uh, have done, for instance, a, a whole review of the curricula including what they call the formal, right? Which is taught in class, the informal, what we learn through the campus expo exposition and the subliminal, which is what we learn in the interactions in our uh, campus, which I think was one of the topic, the, the points that I was trying to raise in the, the beginning, um, which is trying to walk the talk. And that integrity, that commitment, that responsibility is not easy, right? Especially when we're talking about like, a, you know, big organization, you know, when we talk about, about personal level, of course, you know, it always has challenges and, and ethical dilemmas and so on, but it's something that one, one can control but ourselves, you know, our response to the world. 
when we're talking about organizations and then partnerships and then societies and so on, right? The complexity is obviously very, very um, important there. Uh, but just, I think, you know, there'll be the walking, the, like just to kind of summarize, walking the talk, making sure that what we're preaching, what we're education, educating is something that we are really trying to integrate in the way that we behave, in the way that we, you know, operate our campus, um, our partnerships and, and so on. Uh, I don't know if I can complete these ideas or uh, somehow complete my, my your question, adding something. Uh, I, I think that universities are somehow are uh, responsible for launching uh, new ventures like this. Uh, and this is one point that is very important in all of this. Uh, and and uh, launching new products means that we, we should be innovative. And that's what, what we are somehow doing and, and, uh, and uh, from scratch, we are being innovative and we are risking a lot. I, I should say that to state this, I should state this clear because we are risking a lot. Uh, in a global world uh, that changes every day, that, that, that has a lot of uh, challenges and, and so on, we are risking in, a, in an innovative program uh, like this. So. Um, it's part of the responsibility of, of a university to risk, to be innovative, to be responsible for the society and to be also, or to participate also uh, as an elevator in social terms and, and in educational terms. So uh, we want to participate. And this is very important for us to participate in all these movements and all the movements that bring us a better future for us and for our uh, kids. And this is, the role, the main role of, of universities, okay? So uh, I, I think uh, universities cannot escape from, from these this, uh, uh, risks, cannot escape from, from this uh, uh, innovation, let, let's say, and to assume the responsibility of, of doing something for our society, for our world. Okay, great. And um, Anna, a question for you. Um, we have to walk the talk, right? Uh, and the, this MBA, it's, uh, it, it, you can walk us through a little bit in detail about this MBA, but that's a very important part of this MBA, which is learning by doing stuff, okay? So uh, that's how we achieve the, the goal is, is by doing it, by practicing. And, and, and that's a strong uh, a statement that we have in this uh, MBA. Can, can we, you talk a little bit more about it, this practical side of the MBA. Of course, Paul. Uh, thank for the opportunity. Um, and uh, I will build on what has been said already um, in terms of the, 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 the walk to talk as well. So I think that's something, a path that we've been um, uh, walking and it, it, it's a process as we all know it's not a destination it, it, it's, it's a process um, and we've been taking this very very seriously in the various dimensions of um, uh, of academia let's say just like uh, Florence mentioned as well mentioned as well in terms of the program itself it was conceived to uh, bring together uh, so uh, knowledge because and particularly being an accredited program uh, by AMBA, we need to ensure uh, that we have uh, certain topics and areas that are fully covered. Uh, so we have, uh, for instance, uh, in terms of some core modules like sustainable business strategy, economics and sustainability, data science for sustainability, and, and so on. So we have different core modules that will combine, uh, just like in the electives, will combine uh, scholars from our university together with invited guests uh, from academia as well, nationally and internationally and from uh, companies. So we want to bring the, uh, the, um, the experience from others to the classroom as well, and also be able to visit uh, companies to, um, to create a, um, uh, an ecosystem, let's say, of uh, knowledge sharing uh, among our partners, our uh, participants. Uh, so we have some core modules, we have elective modules, uh, like uh, 
system think, systemic thinking for sustainability, circular economy, for instance, sustainable business uh, transformation in the digital area. So several areas that will be more um, somehow hands-on, but to develop some specific skills around sustainability. But we'll also have workshops. Uh, I can tell you, we plan to play cards, but not any cards, uh, specific uh, methodologies. We'll play with the Lego, we'll play with different tools uh, that hands on, hand on tools to um, promote um, uh, the sustainability mindset, as, as I was telling you. So we'll be um, hands on in different ways. Also, there is um, uh, an applied project in the end. So the last three months will be devoted for an applied project in sustainability, where together with our partners, we'll find um, companies and organizations where the participants can um, uh, prepare uh, and develop the project. So throughout the, the program, the idea is to have a very close connection with companies and organizations in the field, bring them to the campus and visit them as well. Um, and there is a final project. And of course, I, I can't um, forget the, the partnership uh, for the study trip with the HEN, and um, where we'll be, we'll have the opportunity to uh, visit local companies as well, companies and to have some other experiences locally. So I'm not sure if I answered your question. Yeah, yeah talk, sure, yeah. sure. But uh, oh, uh, if will you, excuse me, uh, I would like to, to ask something to, to Anna also, uh, because uh, I would like to know what, what is the profile or the persona uh, to be targeted with this program first. And secondly, I would like uh, to know how this persona or how this uh, targeted person will be affected, will be improved by our partners. Sure. So what, for whom is this, this program basically? Huh? Yeah. Uh, and we, 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 have, we have some um, key ideas. So people that will like to share uh, the knowledge and skills with others, want to receive, but also share, that are open to think, uh, uh, to thinking systematically, because you need to be open-minded to come to this course. Huh? You need to be uh, willing to have a more systemic approach to the way we approach uh, management, to understand the complexity of the issues, and you want to, to drive change huh? and impactful change. So I would say that more than the requirements, which of course are entry requirements, but these are the key aspects of the people that um, will uh, be uh, looking for this type of program. So because this is a full-time program, entirely taught in English um, and there's a, a, a minimum entry requirement of um, three years of experience so it's, it's, it's for people that are already working uh, it can be those professionals that are already working in the sustainability field that want to engage even more and have a more um, overarching over view of the company in these different areas. Um, so for those that are already working in the area, but also for those professionals that are willing to drive uh, impactful change guided by the social, environmental and economic purposes that we've been talking to, and that have not been exposed or because they have been exposed, they want to go deeper. So that's really an immersive experience uh, that we want to promote. Um, and that's the reason it's not, it's not a, a, a part-time program or, or um, it, it's, it's a day. Uh, it's a program that will occur during the day. So yeah. it's really to deep dive in the yeah. topic. Great. Uh, Filipe, um, how do you see this, uh, this, uh, this partnership between uh, uh, universities and corporations? How do you see it uh, beyond uh, our status? Uh, meaning that uh, corporations usually receive students for their internships to develop their thesis and so on. And, and mainly in this, in this area, the sustainability, sustainability uh, issues, how do you see we can uh, approach in a different way in the future? Because sustainability is also uh, about bringing 
stakeholders together, bringing, joining and in a common effort and purpose. And so universities, the knowledge and the, the corporations must uh, more than ever join hands and develop a better future for all. Uh, how do you see it, Filipe? Well, I think it's clear for all the need uh, to, 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 to work and cooperate between academy and the corporations. It's clear for all the, the, the importance to, to match uh, both uh, interests um, because of course we corporations need knowledge, need uh, new knowledge and innovative knowledge and, the, corp and the, the academy needs to understand how the corporations are growing and uh, what are their needs. If we look uh, for the last months with the pandemic, uh, CGD became uh, uh, or ha had a huge needs in terms of digital inclusion. Uh, of course, all, all, all our clients needs the banks need the support of the banks but but didn't want to go to the to to to, to our agency so uh, it is quite important to uh, uh, cooperate with academy in order to to have responses for the new challenge and they are growing rising new challenge every day so uh, for us and it's not you kaisha is is partner of of Ishkte for for quite long for, for several years uh, so we understand and uh, and we uh, uh, support the, the 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 knowledge and the ca academic um, field for for long for long time so we believe that that's the the path uh, but as you said paulo uh, it is also quite important to have more cooperation in the field so we think that, and sometimes we we, we receive uh, uh, students from 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 uh, some universities that spend like one month, two months uh, with us in specific areas to learn how we perform uh, uh, our 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 job and what are our main difficulties and challenge, so they can go back for the universities and think uh, um, in an innovative way. Uh, so and it's quite interesting because when we have some colleagues from other departments in our area and namely sustainability area, they are all quite keen to understand and to work with us. So I think that um, we are talking about an issue which is quite uh, uh, a new issue and uh, that people are keen to learn. So I think that we have uh, this uh, key uh, element uh, which is something that people want to, to work and to, um, even if it's just uh, receive cycling practice or integrating the ESG challenge in the business, as I said before, um, I think that uh, uh, our colleagues and the society uh, overall are quite interested, in, in, interested to, to promote and to, to, to contribute with any action. So they just want to learn how to do. Uh, I can share a personal example. Uh, uh, I have a, a daughter of seven years old and once I was uh, in an in environmental uh, uh, um awareness campaign in, at the beach with, the, with the, the college where they have to, 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 to take trash from the, from the beach. And uh, from that moment till now, I have to take all of the trash that I, that I find in the, in the beach. So every time I go to beach, I have to, to take a, a, big, a big plastic bag from, from, from beach. So it, that's a sign that uh, all of us need to, to, to have uh, education and training on new topics and for sure to, be, uh, to have a, a greener uh, culture or behavior is something that we have to learn. And it's not so so normal or so so something that you expect others do like you because you are working on the topics and for several years you became a little bit more environmentalist uh, uh, in your in your behaviors and in your choices um, so I think it's something that we really have to understand that we have to to teach others how to be more sustainable in the several uh, dimensions of our lives as such uh, personal and also professional lives because as a person, we have a lot to do. Uh, our, uh, uh, in our daily business, we can choose a better, uh, uh, like if you go to your source, you have to, to buy your in the supermarket. You, you also have a, 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 a role to play even when you go to supermarkets. So it's something that uh, with this kind of training and with, with this kind of, uh, of management programs, you are teaching uh, the future leaders 
of companies to have them in the DNA of the company. And it's something that CGD is working on. So now we, one of the key st uh, strategic pillars of, uh, of CGD strategy, business strategy is ESG. So that's becoming strategic and so important has commercial approach. Um, and, okay. and so that therefore uh, is something that we have to work, of course, we still have to work in a separate way to, to define policies, to define uh, strategic plans, to define some ESG measures. But at the end, we want them to have uh, uh, integrated, fully integrated in our business. Yeah, great. Thank you. Michael. Paolo, yes. Uh, sorry. Yeah. Will you allow me just a, a very quick note? Of course. Uh, after this, which is um, at GRLI, which is um, a network that we, we belong as well, um, uh, the Globally Responsible Leader Initiative. Uh, we have um, an approach which is I, we, all of us. Which means that, uh, and just to follow up on what Filippo was saying, there are things that we can do at the eye level individually and all the behaviors, just like Filippo was saying. But there are things that need to be done at the we level. Yeah? So, and here are groups, organizations, institutions, and so, and so forth. But there are things that need to be at the all of us level and that's at a more systemic level. So with this program, basically what we want is to go up and down in these three levels. So work on the attitude of us as individuals that will obviously influence the way we as organizations work and deal with the others, but also uh, try to explore ways on how can we influence the system and provoke systemic changes. So. Uh, I think that it, it fits what uh, Filippa was mentioning now, and it, and it shows a little bit more of the, the program. Yeah, great. Uh, Michael, um, uh, when we discussed this partnership with the MBA, FLAP came up with an idea that pleases us a lot. Uh, can we share with us uh, what was that idea and what uh, about rewarding talent and merit, uh, can we share a little yeah. bit more? I think the, the general outlines are that, um, you know, our award uh, will support uh, one or two. I, I, I can't speak to exactly how this will be uh, sort of operationalized in terms two. of the number of grants, two, okay. Um, uh, two awards to support your top students in terms of the curricular part of the program. Um, you know, obviously this would be before they do that third year, um, you know, year long experience, right? Um, but based on their, on their sort of curricular performance, giving them an opportunity to uh, do a, a program in the United States, um, you know, probably around two weeks in length roughly, um, that will be funded through this, through this grant from the foundation. Um, and that could involve, you know, perhaps uh, making some connections for that project that they want to take up. They, it could be about making some academic connections. It could be visiting a company or a not-for-profit or an organization that they see as, as having some potential lessons to bring back to Portugal. Um, you know, and it's, it's really just kind of the, I would say in some ways, the typical sort of grant that, um, that FLAD likes to support, which is, you know, trying to learn uh, from both countries what works, what doesn't, um, uh, to, to the benefit of both of both nation states. That's great. Thank you. Okay, Florencia. Uh, uh, what what do you think it's the role of the world leaders concerning this matter? And if you would advise them, if you know them, uh, to attend this MBA, for example. <laughs> And the leaders, I mean leaders in organizations, in schools, in our society, in government, politics, whatever. Okay, but what's the role of the leaders of this world? Well, I mean, that's, uh, I think, very important that, to think about this role. At, and, and we have covered quite a bit of the, those grants, I think, in this conversation. It requires uh, responsibility. It requires uh, commitment to ethical issues and good governance, uh, include uh, inclusiv inclusivity and understanding that um, we need to solve this, these matters for everyone, not just for a few. Um, they need to understand that for that is required innovation and also uh, system change and be themselves 
willing to take the risk to make that, those changes. Um, it requires empathy. It requires a, a, a human aspect that we really need to emphasize and, and I think goes aligned to this concept of global citizenship that was uh, I was discussing, but it goes beyond to understand that we are all fellow human beings and we, that everyone has the, the right to be treated as such and, and have their needs covered and so on. So, uh, and then of course that um, education uh, is an ongoing and uh, um, life um, kind of journey. So absolutely, I, I will um, emphasize that any opportunity, uh, like this opportunity in particular of this program and others, and I think it's all of the above, in terms of how we continue to enrich ourselves uh, to be the most refined self, the most refined leader um, that, uh, that we can offer to our societies. Great. So uh, we are uh, approaching the, the end of our conversation. Uh, I remind you all that the MBA will run from this next January until March 2023. And I will leave for you to your final words, who, who wants to take them, who wants to, 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 to bring to the table some final words. Anna, please, Michael, Felipe, Florencia. Jose Maria João, uh, final words of encouraging this uh, this world to join uh, and and learn and 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 bring a, a sustainable uh, world to all of us. Uh, some just final say, words. I'll make a brief one. Maybe there was someone else. Go ahead, please. So I say this is um, not a nice to have. This is a must, right? Yeah. Uh, in terms yeah. of own career and our own business models yes. to be successful, but also to be successful in, in this planet. So let's, you know, think about that. It's like, a, it's really a must. We need to do that shift. Yes, completely yeah, agree. I'll pick up on Florencia's comment. I mean, I think I like the question about, you know, what's the relationship between uh, academia, education and, and companies, you know, and I think, uh, I don't know, at least I'll speak for me and my generation, you know, I think we were so inculcated with this mantra of growth, you know, that growth is always good. And, and what, I, what I pick up from my own children, you know, is this, is this very kind of serious, critical questioning of why growth, right? You know, if, if we're sustainable, and we're doing okay. Why do we have this, this, this need to constantly be, you know, focusing on, on growth? And, you know, and, and, and to me, I think that's one of the key questions that uh, you know, that's facing our economic system. That you know, how do we how do we break out of this, you know, this uh, inculcation of growth um, for growth's sake um, in in, a, in an environment where we have finite resources and growth may no longer be uh, in any way sustainable. And and that's a, that that requires a, a total, you know, check on our mindset. Uh, you know, I teach a course on political economy and development, and if there's one mantra that I constantly try to get my students to, to think about is, you know, development for whom, right? And it's, that's, that's, really, that's really the key here. Growth for whom? How do we do it? Who benefits from it? Who doesn't? Um, and how do we create models that, that try to build upon intergenerational equity rather than, you know, taking away? So um, that's, I think that's, a biggest, that's a huge challenge for all of us in, in academia and certainly in, in companies whose bottom line is typically defined by shareholders on whether they're growing or not. So this is it's a challenge for all of us to think about. Okay, great. Well, I was just uh, having a final remark. Um, we think that uh, we are in a, in a point of, uh, of, uh, of the planet that we have to change from uh, looking green or sustainable for being green or sustainable. We have to, to, to act urgently. Uh, we have this uh, the last decade uh, along the, the implementation of SDGs, so we are in charge with them. And regarding this uh, uh, scenario of being sustainable, uh, I think that the, 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 our role is to lead by example. CGD wants to lead the position 
of uh, uh, being a responsible uh, company or a responsible bank and uh, for the the ones that are thinking to to attend to this uh, MBA I think that they have the chance to be the the leaders of uh, the the future uh, responsible managers that's the 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 the, the, the key challenge for for the the top management uh, is to integrate these aspects when they will decide for all of us whether they are just a CEO of a company or uh, a prime minister of a, of, a, of a country. So that's something that uh, it's really the, the leading by example. It's uh, the key point uh, of the, this transformation that we are facing right now. Yes, great conclusion. Anna. If I may leave a final thought, I would say that our commitment uh, with participants is that uh, we'll be looking at management um, and the way companies and organizations are managed, managed not from a conventional way, but we'll be looking from the sustainable to restorative and even regenerative. So we want to look even beyond sustainability, if, I, if I'm clear. Uh, so this is, this is the commitment, the, the way we see management, not only of the future, but of today and yesterday. So we need to move fast. Um, so this is our commitment to see sustainability, um, let's say as, as, as the minimum required, but even going beyond. And that's our commitment. Okay, great. So, no, sorry, I don't know, Jose and Maria João, if you want to say something uh, in the end. Okay. We, 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 need, we, we need people, we need companies, we, we need organizations to be with, with us in, in, this, in this process, in this venture. So I, in, I'm formally inviting everyone to visit us, to, to come to, to us, to know us, to know this, this uh, project and to... Uh, well, uh, to ask us questions, uh, because we are here waiting for you in order to um, somehow, in order to sustain this, 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 uh, this also this, this program for the future. So um, we are waiting for you. That's it. That's it. Uh, you're so, yeah. okay. If I can say something that is difficult to add something new, uh, uh, to head uh, to what has uh, already said, but I will say that take the challenge, uh, come and join us because we have a lot to do in in uh, this way, and the challenges are uh, we have a lot of challenges in front of us. So come and join us. Uh, we'll be waiting for you. Yeah. Okay, and thank, thank you, you very, very much. much once again. Thank you very much, Maria Joao. Thank you. I'm, I, I, I'm sorry for not uh, being able to place the couple of questions in our YouTube chat, but please contact us. Uh, we are uh, online uh, with uh, with our contacts and with our more information. And uh, please uh, take notice that we are full committed on bringing this MBA to a, a, a level of excellency um, great beyond our, our, our normal level, if I say so. So, uh, so uh, please join us and uh, uh, thank you very much for, uh, for our guests, for being with us and uh, see you around. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.